ratification and pledge of allegiance will be led by Councilmember Reesner. Please join me for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I will ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Councilmember Reesner. Here. Spar. Here. Councilmember Thacker. Here. Councilmember Wilkins. Here. Councilmember Jones. Present. Councilmember Leopard. Here. And Councilmember Perry. Here. Let the record show all seven members of council are present. Minutes from April 3rd, regular and committee of the whole meetings were distributed with a change. Yep. Yes. Um, everybody should have received that. Are there any questions, uh, further corrections or deletions on those minutes from April 3rd? Okay, seeing none, the minutes will stand approved as presented. Uh, we are now under committee reports. Finance Committee, Councilmember Reesner. No report, Madam President. Thank you. On community planning, Councilmember Leppard. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Materials and equipment, Councilmember Jones. No report at this time, Madam President. Thank you. And personnel and uh, labor relations, Councilmember Perry. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> A personnel and labor relations committee was held on April 10th, starting at 515 at the council chambers to discuss mayor's request for legislation 23-22, appointing John Bing to the Board of Health and any other business to come before the committee. In attendance were Councilmember Perry, Councilmember Thacker, Councilmember Spar, Mayor Ionatuno, Law Director Howard and City Administrator Dutro. Mayor Dawn explained she she picked John because she liked the common sense approach he would bring and how his heart is always in the right place. Dutro explained the thought process behind releasing the other candidates' resumes and their letters of intent was to continue to always promote transparency between the city and the government. Perry explained he thought Bing's resume would be perfect if the spot was for the Arts Commission, but his resume lacked any kind of medical background for a spot on the Board of Health. Spar mentioned that there didn't seem to be any requirements for the appointment to the Board of Health, and also said that he and Bing differ very much on policy. While he and Bing differ very much on policy, he did not see a reason to vote no on the legislation. Spar also mentioned we were not there to talk about the other candidates, only to confirm or deny the mayor's appointment of John Bing. Thacker echoed Spar's comments and said, our job is confirm or deny, and it's mayor's job to make the appointment. Perry acknowledged that it is the mayor's job to make the appointment, but explained he didn't feel good about Bing's resume, especially when compared against the other candidates, and thought Mary Franks would have been the choice after the last appointment. Mayor Don explained John Bing would be replacing Bonnie Boroff, who is just a regular citizen. She also went on to say that she tries to make appointments based on the person, regardless of political party. Mayor Don stated she felt that given Mary Franks' decision to run for mayor, that the seat would have to be filled again shortly if she were to win, and it would give her an unfair advantage in the mayor race if she were to get this appointment. The mayor also noted uh, Mary has been chosen to be on the ADA board and that she is a great fit for that board. Perry said that she, he, when he thinks of a person for the Board of Health, they should have some sort of background in that field. Howard reiterated that it is our job to confirm or deny the appointment and would have to set aside the other candidates. He went on to explain the diversity, that diversity on a board is good because it can bring good ideas and a certain way of thinking. Perry acknowledged he did not know the makeup of the Board of Health, but felt it was important that between the representatives that Tiffin chooses, they should have different points of view on topics of health. Perry also said he did not feel good not feel John Bing was the best representation of what an everyday Tiffinite would want in someone for that position. Thacker asked about the timeline of the nomination to which the law director explained that this will be read three times. Spar asked about when the mayor received word John uh, wanted to be considered, and she explained she had gotten a call from John before the deadline expressing his interest, and she told him it would be best to put something in writing. Thacker most motioned to approve the mayor's appointment to the board of, of John to the Board of Health, and Spar seconded. During discussion, Perry explained he will be voting no because of the lack of guidelines that make of what makes up the Board of Health, and we would have to come up with our own criteria. The fact Bing did not have a health background was the main reason for his vote. 
Becker felt being doing research at Hederberg and was able to analyze data was a good quality for the board. Spar mentioned Scott Lyons, was also, who also has no health background, but is a restaurant owner, who is a good member of the board, and again, could see no reason to vote no on this appointment. The vote passed two to one with Thacker and Spar voting yes, and Perry voting no. Hearing no other business, the meeting adjourned at 547. Thank you. Any questions on that report? Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Recreation and Public Property, Councilmember Wilkins. No report, Madam President. Thank you. Street Sidewalks and Sewers, uh, Councilmember Thacker. Um, no report, Madam President. Thank you. And Economic Development and Downtown Planning, Councilmember Spar. Uh, no report at this time, Madam President. Thank you. At this time, does anyone <coughs> see the need to schedule a committee of the whole meeting? Okay. Thank you. We are now under reports of the officers, Her Honor Mayor Don Yanatuna. Thank you, Madam President. We have some very special guests with us this evening, and since we're lacking some room, I would like to invite them to come into the well here so that the community watching at home can see these lovely young ladies. Not to put you all on the spot, but we're going to. <laughs> My apologies, I wasn't aware. Congratulations, how awesome. <laughs> People should tell me these things. <laughs> <laughs> so we have here with us this evening the 2023 Tiffin Columbian State Champion cheerleading team and their coach Jamie Hepp and I have a proclamation for all of you. Whereas the 2023 Tiffin Columbian cheerleading team qualified for the Ohio Association of Secondary School Administrators Ohio Dance and Cheer State Championship Competition on Saturday, March 4th, 2023, and whereas TC Cheer competed against more than 20 divisions, Division Three teams at the state championship, the largest competition in 31 years, and whereas the Tiffin Columbian cheerleading team won the state championship title for the Division Three non-building traditional routine, and whereas the Tiffin Columbian cheerleading team won the state championship title for the Division Three game day non-building category as back-to-back -back champions on March 4th. Therefore, be it resolved, I, Don M. Yanantuno, Mayor of the City of Tiffin, Ohio, hereby proclaim April 17th, 2023, in the City of Tiffin as Tiffin Columbian Cheerleading Day on the 17th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2023. Congratulations to all of you. Great job. I also know you all have an outstanding coach. Coach Jamie, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, this is year 28. Oh. <laughs> You're a real expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is year 28. Um, I have been with the program. I graduated from Columbian High School, went all the way through Bobby's Den, um, part of the Tiffin community, lived to, you know, born and raised in Tiffin, and graduated from The Ohio State University. And wanted to give back to the community. So as soon as I graduated from Columbian, I, my mom was coaching at Tiffin Middle School, which was actually West Sevens and East Gators then. Mm -hmm. And I would come back and choreograph routines uh, for the middle school teams and the high school as well. Um, it, for me, it was a way to give back to the community without them paying for those services, which can be quite costly. And so I would come back um, on the weekend, sometimes during the week, as I was a member of the dance team at Ohio State, so I was quite busy with that, but would drive back and forth um, and just clean up the routines and choreograph for them. And after I graduated, um, my fiance, who was also from born and raised in Tiffin, we moved back to Tiffin, and I started teaching um, at E, well, it was Tiffin Middle School, eighth grade only at that point, and I started teaching PE there and continued coaching from that point on, so I've been here ever since. And I've had three girls that have went through the system as well. And my last daughter will be graduating and they all cheered for <coughs> this Tiffin Middle School and Columbian High School. So it's near and dear to our heart. Um, definitely by then, you know, Tiffin proud and excited to give back to the community that way, um, where people pay a lot of money for the services to get the athletes where they're at, and that's something that we could do for them. Um, two things I just want you to know is uh, Tiffin has been so supportive of us. We don't have the facilities, obviously, that 
some of our competitors do. They actually have their own cheer gyms and a room that is just for them um, within their facilities. And we do what we can at Crowd Elementary, which is extremely small. A competition floor is nine mats. We only own three. So our practices are very strict on what we're doing. And last year, TU opened up their wrestling room to us. So we went there um, about six practices to get ready. And then this year, we went over to St. Mary's and worked with the TU stunt team. And they opened their facilities for us about six times. Um, and we just worked around that. So we are, to us, that's a gift. And we made use of that time to do what we do and to do well. So that is one thing that sets us apart from a lot of our competitors, as well as our kids all cheer on the sidelines, which is not the thing with cheerleaders anymore. I've learned um, since we've got back into the heavy competitive world is that a lot of them have competition teams and they never once cheer on the sidelines, which to me is very sad because that's not what it's about. Um, for that part, maybe you need to go join an all-star team, you know, something to that lines, but we cheer on the sidelines and they compete. Our competing is almost a reward for us doing what we do on the sidelines Friday and Saturday nights. So that's our, our little reward ourselves. I guess you look at it that way. Um, so that's really near and dear to us with that. And our game day that we're back to back um, state champs in is what you see us do on Friday nights at the football game and the basketball games. And that featured our Columbian marching band. Um, you have to do your fight song and have their music so they record that for us. So that is also really neat because it's a collaborative effort. So that's just a little bit of background about the competition where we're at. So thank you again for allowing us to come here and honoring our team. It is much appreciated. Well, that's what I, I really like about Tiffin right there. You said you didn't have extra facilities and stuff and TU stepped up mm -hmm. and offered their facilities. And right there is what I like about Tiffin. You were a cheerleader also, were you not? Yes, I cheered I thought all the way you were. too. West Zephyr. So you had a great role model and great experience there. And so we want to thank you all for coming in and congratulate you once again. And I'll, I'll give your coach your proclamation. And can we all get a big picture together? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on, our department head reports are continuing tonight with the sixth up is our head of our Parks Department, Bryce Kuhn, and also with him is Mike Pinkston, chair of our Tree Commission, and I think Dr. Ken Baker is also here this evening from the Tree Commission, so take it away, Bryce. Perfect. Uh, first of all, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, definitely uh, love my job, but I love our department. Um, we have definitely a unique job within this city, and it's, uh, it's, it definitely goes to show that Tiffin loves its parks, um, along with city administration as well as city council. So thank you uh, for the ongoing support and, uh, and extra money. Uh, 
um, when we come to request. Really appreciate it. So start off our PowerPoint here. There we go. So each and every year, um, our Parks Department, along with our board, recognizes individuals and or organizations as volunteers of the year. Literally hundreds of volunteers put forth a tremendous amount of effort in making our parks, programs, and our community a better place to live, work, and play. Roger is part of the Community Inclusion Program through the Seneca County Opportunity Center. <coughs> Janet, his supervisor, was a big help in getting Roger connected with the Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department last year. Janet's main goal is connecting individuals with different agencies throughout town so they are giving back and building those wonderful relationships. Roger loves working um, outdoors, landscaping. Uh, it was a perfect match for the East Green. Roger and Janet would go to the East Green twice a month for a couple hours at each time. They would pull weeds, cut back, shape bushes, pick up trash, and help keep the East Green looking nice. Roger and Janet are both one of many individuals that love to help volunteer within the city parks. It is people like this that makes Tiffin a better Tiffin. After this being said, Tiffin Parks and Recreation Department would like to congratulate Roger, Roger Barney and Janet Zilch on recipients of the 2022 Parks and Recreation Volunteers of the Year Award. <laughs> All right, we're talking about our 2022 capital projects. Um, I will say the, the first thing, the, our digital sign that's out at Hedges Warrior Park that's been on a capital request for like the last three years and we finally got it. So thank you. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, um, it is definitely a great addition right in front of the pool. Um, we can control it um, remote from our office, uh, which we're out, um, if you haven't been to our office, out on uh, 101 past IGA, the old state highway garage, which is crazy that we can control it from our office to down there. Um, but obviously our big inclusive playground uh, that we put in last fall, um, no matter the temperature, day, rain, um, it's being used and it, it's wonderful. Parking lots being packed, uh, both parking lots, pool parking lot as well. So we have the Nature Trails Park Project remodel. We got the quarter mile trail there um, with the playground as well as a swing set and a little revamp of the pavilion um, shelter. Um, that was a CDBG project. Uh, we finally have our Wi-Fi project um, completed out of Hedges Warrior Park. We partnered with Baskin Communications for that project, so the entire park, um, wherever there's a sports field um, or a complex, so tennis courts, basketball court, um, the swimming pool, the barn, um, the playground, and the fields down below, the baseball fields as well as the football fields are all Wi-Fi um, fed. Um, this signal is pretty pretty strong too. It's amazing because um, we're out there every day and we have no phone service um, for whatever reason. Verizon's phone service on the east side of Hedgesbury Park is limited, so it's nice having connection to the Wi-Fi. Um, we were able to stripe their parking lots with capital dollars last year at Hedges, Oakley, um, and Shucklehoff uh, Trail. We updated our restroom facility with the inclusive playground that went out at Hedges. Um, obviously, ADA was a big piece of our, um, during our COVID summer reviews. Um, so we did a ADA revision of the both restrooms. Um, unfortunately, actually we had some uh, vandalism day two after we opened them. So we had to close them for this season um, due to the vandalism. So hopefully this um, spring here, the next week when we open those up, people will uh, take better care of those facilities. Along with that, we updated um, all of our picnic, excuse me, majority of our picnic tables to be handicapped accessible. One out of every picnic table that's in our shelter needs to be a handicapped um, accessible, being that needs to be uh, an extra 33 inches in length so that a wheelchair uh, individual would be able to have 
full access to roll underneath the table itself. So um, that was another winter project that um, our groundskeeper, Todd, um, tackled um, a couple years back. Along with that, we took over Junior Home Memorial Park. A lot of you guys may remember uh, Joe Buckley is the one that has um, dedicated and put so many hours of his life into that park and beautifying it, uh, picking sticks up, planting flowers to mulching. Um, basically, that was his second home. Um, he would be there for hours. So with him passing here recently in the last couple of years, um, the foundation that kind of oversaw that park, um, the funds were um, diminishing. Um, so we um, had taken that over um, as best as we can, simple mowing um, with a couple mulch um, mulching areas um, as the year moves forward for them. And we were able to update our PA system out at the pool. Um, obviously, emergency um, PA systems are needed if we do have a situation that arises. Um, so we've been kind of getting smart with the years past and um, making voice notes and using old tape cassettes. It was outdated, but we figured it out. So it's nice to be able to actually talk into a microphone. <laughs> Um, some of our events uh, for 2022, uh, we had our party in the parks. We had three of those last year that was funded through NOPEC. Um, we had our Oakley Park cleanup, which this year we just had it this past weekend, was our 10th uh, annual uh, cleanup, which is awesome because that neighborhood is so, so nice, so fun, uh, and they give back to that little park um, so much. Um, we have our, uh, had our band bashes Thursday nights, um, Thursday night tunes at the East Green, um, which we started those a couple years ago, um, late fall 2021. Um, we had some extra money in our budget and let's throw something together and it seems like it really kicked off um, and it works with all the third Thursday events that are happening downtown. So um, really fun events there. We have our special needs community swims. Those are Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, before the pool actually opens up. It's 11.30 to 1 p.m., ranging anywhere from 5 to 20, 25 swimmers um, on a nice hot day. Last year, being our bicentennial, we had our 4th of July celebration, um, brought back a car show, um, which was really nice. Had over 125 cars um, out there, um, which was really nice. Uh, yoga at the East Green with Yoga Chuck. Um, that's always a nice Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday morning event, um, and then can't go wrong with our fish and derby uh, with our Isaac Walton uh, family out on the north end of town. Day camps, we um, have a couple partnership camps. Our culinary camp, we partner up with Sentinel, um, and that filled up in a minute and a half this year. <laughs> uh, so it tells you, it's, I mean, there's 20 kids that can go in that class, but it tells you that there's clearly uh, an interest there. Um, we had equestrian camp. We uh, partnered with the Lane of Dreams for that one. Uh, I take about 80 kids for that. I just checked this morning. There's two spots left um, for that one. Um, it's amazing to see these camps listed here of how quick they fill up when we go live. Um, it's, 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 again, it, it just goes to show this community is wonderful and um, really supports the park system. Um, so our other explore camps, those are the ones that are mainly stationed out at Hedges um, at the barn. Um, throughout the week, uh, Mason will have different um, agencies or businesses or speakers come out to these events. And um, really a big one is Space Camp. Um, uh, Alan Bilger comes out and he works with the kids for two days on building rockets. And then that day two, they go out and launch him in the center of the oval. Um, he really loves that. Um, and it's nice to see that connection with, again, the community. Somebody that has a big heart like that that wants to give back um, comes to us and helps with that, those camps. Uh, we have capital projects for this year. Really excited for our hillside project at Hedges Warrior Park. Um, so if you're going up the hill, be on the right side where the sidewalk is. There's a, we, obviously we'd spoke to council about that, see if you guys remember from a few months back, but we're gonna be uh, bumping that sidewalk out. It's currently four foot. We're gonna be blowing it out. It's about eight foot wide. Um, and then we're gonna be doing a hardscape um, into that hillside um, with some letters, obviously Hedges Border Park. So looking forward to seeing that project here in the next month. It's a month and a half to get uh, started and completed. We're gonna do a sidewalk update at Riverview Park. 
Um, when we did that project, we were just a few dollars short to um, update the sidewalk on the um, east side of the property. So we're going to be um, complying ADA with that as well this year. We got our updated electric to the center of the oval. We were able to um, run a uh, 450 foot of primary um, line underground to get us more um, electric inside the oval for future projects. Um, Updating our basketball surfacing at Oakley Park along with Riverview Park. Um, give those homes around there some three point shots, uh, you know, three point line shots, um, foul throws. Um, we're going to be repaving the uh, Summit Street Hill um, along with that hillside <coughs> project. If you guys drive up and down the hill, you know, there's that nice little hump where the culvert used to be. Um, it seems like that's the never ending uh, sinkhole, but hopefully um, we can get that um, cleaned up as well. We're working with our design work too for the wetlands project that'll be going in at Hedges. Um, we got a couple designs looking forward to that. Um, working with a company out of uh, Kent um, that knows wetlands, because I know nothing about wetlands. So it's kind of fun to see that process evolve. Um, and then we're gonna be widening out uh, Shekelhoff, the parking lot. So if you guys have been out there, a lot of you pull in, how do I park? Do I park half on the parking lot or half off the stone? So making that a true parking lot will be nice um, this coming this coming summer. Our events uh, for 2023, if you haven't seen them on our website already, uh, we're gonna go uh, opening day for the pool. Um, it'll be the 29th Memorial Day, 1 p.m. We'll be in the parade as we always are. Uh, no pack party on the 4th of July. They'll be sponsoring this year our um, inflatables. Uh, for the day. We had our Oakley Park cleanup last weekend, our Bam Bash, which is our year-end, kind of our year-end concert and the ramp up for the school season to start. Um, it's really just taken off down at the East Green with the different marching bands, local high schools um, tying into that. Um, Thursday, the, you know, the Thursday night tunes starting on the 22nd. Um, uh, Fourth of July car show will be back as well as our fishing derby. So, any questions? No questions. Yes, good question. Yeah, Aren't there two parking lots at Shuck Shucklehofer Park? One on Water is, Street. Yes, one on yeah. So uh, part of the expansion, or not the expansion, the bump out with uh, Shucklehofer on the paved portion is the handicap accessibility piece. Okay. We just got to make sure we're compliant with how deep and wide the um, spots need to be. Okay. So you're correct. Yes. I don't have any questions, but just more. I don't. I guess the question. I don't know how you do it all. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> events are always incredible. Always super successful. I know everybody always looks forward to them, and so kudos to you and team for somehow always getting it done. I know Fourth of July especially. You love waking up at like what two in the morning, <laughs> something crazy. Maybe going to bed at two in the morning. So no, seriously, thank you for everything that you and the team do. It's you're doing a good job. Appreciate it. We have a really good, uh, small, and uh, efficient team. Yeah, Councilman yeah. Leopard. Uh, do we still receive any funding uh, from the Kellogg Foundation for upgrades or maintenance? So the, the Kellogg's fund, uh, Foundation um, was in, um, and Brent, correct me if I'm right, is through the Charitable Foundation, the Community okay. Foundation, um, and it is a grant, um, access to recreation grant to be exact, um, and we have applied for that before in the past uh, to do like uh, ceiling and patchwork for trails. Mm -hmm. It's anything with the accessibility, um, handicapped accessibility, pavements, um, it, it, as long as that's in mind, um, we've gotten a good a good amount of money for that in the past years. Is that correct? Great. Yeah, that's all correct. An endowment was required when that uh, fund was created, and so it keeps uh, providing extra benefits to the city um, for um, access to recreation, people with disabilities. Perfect. Keep Thank eating you. your Kellogg cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, is there anything from Mike, too, while he's Yes, here? Mike is up to go next. Hi, I'm Mike Nixon. Hit it. Go. <laughs> um, so there are five commissioners on the Tiff and Tree Commission. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, 
We meet monthly on the first Wednesday of each month in this room at 9.30 in the morning until 10.30. It, it, those meetings are open to the public, so if anyone here would like to come to those meetings, you certainly are welcome to. Um, we encourage all the, kind, all the participation we can from garden clubs, civic groups, any service clubs, uh, general um, members of the community. Um, we, cert we oversee certain projects to maintain the city's status as a tree city. Um, an example of the, of, the tr of the commission's work right now is um, we are attending Tree Academy. And um, just last Thursday, there were nine members of the Tiffin community who went to the second two-day seminar of five or excuse me, a four, so we'll go there for um, eight days total. And um, of those nine people, there three of them were, were commissioners. One was a friend of the commission, hoping to soon be a commissioner, a city councilman, our mayor, and three members from the public works staff. Um, the commission has also worked to, to um, take soil samples and to collect um, site notes from around the city to gather information to develop a master plan for the city, uh, excuse me, the city's tree infrastructure. Soon we'll complete that master plan for the city's infrastructure, we'll complete that, and that will be a resource that will help the city um, in, the, in the planting in the future, um, and it will also help in applying for fund support from any number of a, a variety of private and public sources. Without that master plan, oftentimes there is, there is no funding available because the first question is, do you have a plan? So, um, <coughs> where are we? Training about here. Um, the Tree Commission also continues to organize the historic district hanging flower plants, the black large flower pots, the flower beds around town, including the various welcome to Tiffin locations at the city limits. Additionally, it selects all those flowers and recruits all the or recruits and organizes dozens of volunteers, both who plant those flowers and the nightly summer watering. Again, if there's anyone here who would like to help with that watering, let me know and you can join the fun. Um, they can we, drive a gator legally. <laughs> <laughs> Across Washington Street, sometimes the hose falls off, sometimes it doesn't. It's more fun than you should be allowed to have in town. Um, we also will be working with the Ohio Department of Human Resources and the city administration and the law director. They don't know that yet. Um, to make a recommendation to City of Council for a mutilation ordinance. Actually, I warned Brent just about an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> when, on it. When, when the city's tree infrastructure is damaged by vendors or subcontractors or individuals, um, we, will recommend com we will recommend consequences for those actions. Um, we will also include a related management policy suggestion what city council decides to do with those things that are shortly up to them. But this comes from um, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources um, work. Let me see. Um, now we should talk a little bit about Arbor Day. We're gonna have Arbor Day on Friday, April the 28th at 1.30 in the afternoon. It's gonna be um, on Benner Street. I think the Benner, excuse me, the Benner Street Trail which I think is gonna be at the corner of Benner Street and Adams Street. I should point out that in 1973, on March the 19th, was when the first tree ordinance was signed. So this year we are celebrating 50 years of um, having a tree commission. Shortly after that, Heidelberg faculty member, Dr. Percy Lilly joined the commission and in just a few short years, Tiffin met the criteria and was named a Tree City USA. This is, national, this is a national distinction and is connected to the Arbor Day, Arbor Day Foundation and the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. Tiffin has enjoyed that distinction every year since for some 42 years. If I'm not mistaken, 
I should also point out in the Arbor Day celebrations, Heidelberg University is working toward a tree campus designation with the, with the Arbor Day Foundation. And um, they will celebrate Arbor Day twice this year. First, to announce the naming of the collection of trees on its campus, the Percy Lilly Collection, and later to share that designation during Alumni Weekend. Tiffin University is also working toward campus, uh, tree campus designation. Not, they're not quite as far along, but a representative of the university regularly meets with our commission to understand the value of the designation. At our Arbor Day um, celebration, we'll have students from Noble School and the, and, the, and the Tree Commission will recognize Dr. Lilly's leadership in helping create the Tree Commission and support its work. Does anyone have any questions? In May, we will go to receive the 43rd designation of um, Tree City USA. Mike, I know when I do safety week every year with the students, it's been about 10 years now, I always <coughs> pay more attention to crosswalks for a while. Well, after two day, more days of training last week, I'm really paying attention to trees again <laughs> and watching where they're planted and should they have been planted there. And it's really a great experience to see wh what happens to trees and the damage we cause to them and how valuable they really are to a community. You, do, you don't realize how much until you take those classes and you, you learn a lot of this stuff. So Wait, the, it's a good program. The, the trees are vital to our community for a variety of reasons. First of all, the shade and windbreak trees reduce the cooling and heating costs to all of our homeowners and, and the public buildings. We know there can be a value put on a tree and if the right tree planted in the right place can have, can have an economic effect. A crab apple tree is worth $200 over, over a 20 year period. A larger like London plain tree will have a value to, the, to its owner for $1,800. So don't go small, go big, <laughs> bigger value. Um, everyone looks for tree lined streets, parks with trees, Shady, shady moments around town. There's the community aesthetic that is trees. You know, marketing materials talk about spring, summer, and fall. We want to have flowering trees in the spring. The, mayor just, uh, the former mayor just posted a picture of his magnolia tree in his yard. We want to have shade in the summer for when we go to a picnic. In the fall, we want to have fall color. And we take those pictures of going to football games. None of those happen if we don't have the trees. And I just have a question for anybody. Does anyone here look for a sunny spot when they want a picnic to, in the park? <laughs> All looking for a nice shady spot. So we have to rake a few leaves, we have to take care of those trees, but they're valu valuable to us for a variety of reasons. Anyhow, lastly, I should thank city for its continued support of the tree of the of the tree commission and and I want to also thank the public works and the park reactions park and recreations professionals for all the work they do it is an, I think it's an honor for me and I would suggest that it is an honor for um, all of the other commissioners thank you thank you for everything you do Mike Oh, and we also learned that clay is not the evil soil everyone thinks it is. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it gets a bad rap. Mike, thank you so much for coming in, and Dr. Baker, too, for supporting them. And Bryce is always excellent job. Yeah. Anything else much. for them before they take off? Thank you. Continuing on. Updates, I keep saying this one, but it bears repeating every meeting, I think. Road closures and delays continue around the city with projects going on now with several utilities, so please be patient. It's going to be a long year. Uh, Council Member Leppard asked me to give an update on the K-9 project. Uh, the Qantas Club of Seneca County was here two weeks ago, and they're fundraising for the K-9 dog for the police department. And they're right now roughly at $4,600, but 3,300 and some odd amount needs to go to, or 
need to congratulate Officer Liz. Lost her Miller. Name. Miller. Miller. Lost her name. Uh, Officer Liz Miller and her family went out and did a bake sale and raised over $3,300. And oh, so kudos God. to her and her family. That's how dedicated she is to this project. And I know the club has ordered the T-shirts. They're starting out with 144 of them. And I think they said they're selling them for $20 each. You saw the logo here. And so if anybody's interested, reach out to them to get a t-shirt and so that's how it is so far and you'll see in tonight's agenda that there's 3950 that went into the police department from separate funds coming in for the dog and so Kiwanis will still go for their 10,000 minimum so that they have plenty of funding in there for to feed the dog vet bills it's training and so everybody's treats. very dedicated to treats and treats treats she's a new dog owner <laughs> <laughs> Some toys <laughs> yeah special things for the dog too yeah. but it's it's going well they're just getting started so they hope to knock that out pretty soon, though. So thank you for asking. Um, upcoming events in April and May before our next meeting. This month's third Thursday is this week. It will be an artist stroll from 5 to 8 p.m., and I have their flyer with me. It will have food trucks and music also, and thanks to the Parks Department, they, I, how do I want to say that, for you guys, for your Thursday night tunes, get licensing so that you're able to do that. And they're sharing that with the city of Tiffin so that they don't get charged for having musicians in downtown. And so we're, they're letting us borrow that. So great. That, that helps them out too. So everything, you know, seeing the artwork, um, artists, musicians, everything is free, just not the food trucks. And so, and please visit our local merchants as you're downtown. And let's see, local businesses have banded together to create a litter league. Their first event will be this Saturday, the 22nd, starting at 9 a.m. Chamber's annual legislative breakfast will be the 27th at Camden Falls. <clears throat> Feature speakers will be Senator Bill Reinecke, Congressman Gary Click, C County Commissioner Tony Paradiso, and myself from 8 to 9.30 a.m., the Arbor Day <coughs> celebration Mike Pinkson already mentioned is Benner Street and, at Adams Street on the 28th at 1.30 Tomorrow is the last day to file your taxes. Do not forget. And then I want to defer to Nick for a little bit of Eclipse information. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I do know that on the agenda uh, in the next couple of weeks, um, Councilman Spar, in his official duty um, with the EMA, will be talking a little bit more about logistics concerning the eclipse. But I wanted to bring up to Council that uh, today we met with some folks from Destination Seneca County. Um, we are going to be coming to you with a request for um, an appropriation for this year and next year um, to uh, do show off the, our county, um, put together an event or a group of events, um, put some, some funds toward that to showcase what we have going on here in Seneca County. We know there's going to be a lot of people coming to Tiffin, to Seneca County um, to see this event happen. Um, and this will be an opportunity for us to better highlight our community, to work with our partner of Destination Seneca County. Um, ultimately, these funds would come out of our bed tax dollars. So um, those are specifically set aside for us to do um, recreation projects or, or beautification, things that, that uh, further bring more people into our community, um, highlight tourism. So um, we're excited to be working with Destination Seneca County again on this. Um, and uh, we'll have hopefully more details of that to come. But um, we did have that meeting today. And I'm looking forward to uh, what we can do working with them um, and coming up with some, some good things to go along with that event coming up. Yeah, they're hoping to plan for possibly Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so that we have a captive audience. We might as well take advantage of that and, and offer some other things possibly. So they're working on that. And so that's where the conversation starts. And then John will be updating us in June with more information. So that concludes my report, unless anybody has any questions. Questions for the mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Clerk of Council, Ann Forrest. Um, no report, Madam President. Thank you. And Director of Finance, Kathy Kaufman. Thank you, Madam President. I do have the financial numbers for the month of March. Receipts for the month for $4,807,946.57. Total expenses for the month were $3,421,250.31.
The general fund unencumbered balance is $4,750,206.03. Income tax receipts for March 2023 were $954,886.15. Total annual increase in income tax receipts for March 2023 when compared to March 2022 was $48,272.11. Year to date, we are still down a little bit, down 5.67%. The 0.25% portion of income tax receipts that was transferred into Fund 215 for public streets for March was $112,649.14. The unexpended balance for all funds is $37,669,942.81, which is the same as the bank balances for this time period. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Kathy. Questions for the finance director? I, I would just like to point out, I know we're down a little bit, but we're doing really well. If you remember last year, we were coming off of covid and so people were anxious to get out, and we think we had a bumper January and February last year, and, and so March is showing more true figures now as we're starting to balance back out again. So we're doing, we're doing well. It was just an unusual year last year starting out. So, yeah. Councilman Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I know everything in the March financials is spot on, but just want the community to know that city council is looking over these 48, 52 page reports before we approve them. And as I was filtering through them, three things jumped out at me. One, I saw a check was issued on March 17th to DLZ Ohio Incorporated. I just wanted to get an explanation of what that was. I know the answer I heard back from Administrator Dutro, but I'd like the public to know what the check to DLZ Ohio, or who they are, I guess. You can answer that. Sure, thank you, uh, Councilman. So um, DLZ is a uh, firm that we have worked with um, many times before their construction engineer. Um, they are working with us on a uh, the, the main interceptor project. That's a project that Council's already had a couple of meetings about, um, approved some funds for, um, and I believe that uh, it was the uh, January 23rd Street Sidewalk and Sewer Committee where you had those discussions. So that's just payment on that, um, on that particular project that uh, council had approved previously. Okay, thank you. And then another, don't have to have the answer tonight, but it, under the page of outstanding checks, I noticed 23 checks were issued, and normally there's a name or organization, and those 23 were left blank. And I guess I want to get an overall idea of what these 23 checks were for before I can approve something like that. And again, item three jumped out at me, same thing, under case checks, 81 case checks were issued, again, with no name or organization associated. So we're talking 104 checks. I know there's a good reason for it. If i just not comfortable <laughs> approving a monthly budget, or I'm sorry, monthly financial, not knowing where some of these dollars in general are going. Finance Director. Uh, so this was an interesting one. Um, so we changed our process for how we do the refunds this year. We were just putting them all in one by one, and we found out there was a way to actually import a file. So we started doing that in 2023. When I looked into your question, what I found was the imported file from income tax. They were all income tax refunds, by the okay. way. Okay, all right. Um, the imported file had a vendor number in one of the columns. There was one zero, like a lead zero, that was not there. So when that file was imported into the system, it did not go to the normal income tax vendor code that we have in there. It just created a new one, and there was no label attached to it. So that's why it didn't show anything. So I think all I need to do then is go into that other vendor code, label it as income tax refunds, and the next time that I print that, they'll all have their label again. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for... And it's director. Council Member Reesner. Um, I, I do always appreciate your help uh, in answering the questions. I, I, I do e send her email sometimes too, mm -hmm. and usually it's a pretty quick uh, response. Uh, with that, I, I motion to approve the finance director's uh, report, bank reconciliation month ending uh, March 
of 2023. Thank you. There's a motion to accept the finance director's report and bank reconciliation for the month of March. Is there a second? Councilmember Leopard. I'll second the motion. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Director of Law, Brent T. Howard. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, one update on the uh, Riverfront uh, Development Project, the apartment building. Uh, the administration met with the developer in the last uh, couple of weeks and talked about uh, a few of the issues. One uh, was parking. Um, the uh, developer wanted a significant number of parking spaces dedicated to the apartment building. And these are spots in lot number six, which is um, starts on uh, Monroe Street by the church going down to the river. Um, that was contrary to the city's policy of keeping that property open for parking for the downtown area unless there is some transformational project that going through a, a lengthy process you would review and approve. Um, so that was not acceptable to, um, uh, to the city. Um, also, we understand from the developer that uh, using TIF financing is going to be more expensive than he originally thought. So he's looking at alternatives um, and believes that he will not need the TIF financing. So the legislation that uh, you passed last year uh, may not be required. That's not final. I guess nothing's final for this project until you start seeing tangible things happen. But uh, for now, it doesn't appear that uh, there will be any uh, specific uh, legislation that you will need to do a final approval for uh, the TIF uh, financing. Um, for parking, uh, we understand that the developer is looking at um, other alternatives, um, in particular using private property that they will um, have some access and use rights that might be remote from the, the location, could be uh, valet parking, they indicated, um, but whatever property that they would need to um, use for parking, it would have to and it should comply with zoning. As you may know, uh, the zoning code um, allows um, private parking, but only in certain uh, classifications, certain districts. Um, so uh, we don't know the location yet that they're considering, uh, but um, I've urged their attorney to verify the zoning and try to make sure that, that they comply with zoning um, and would not need any variances. So that's the update that I have on the uh, Riverfront project. Uh, timetable is still uncertain. Um, heard a lot of different things over the next several months. We should uh, see some things happening, but um, nothing definite. Any questions? <clears throat> that concludes my report. Thank you. We are now under written communications. Thank you. We have uh, mayor's request for legislation, number 23-24, appointment to the Shade Tree Commission, Dr. Susan Carty. Mayor's request for legislation, number 23-24, will be referred to the Personnel and Labor Relations Committee. Mayor's request for leg legislation, number 23-25, the WPCLF loan for EPA projects. Mayor's request for legislation, number 23-25, will be referred to the Street Sidewalks and Sewers Committee. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-26, TMAC Community Placemaking Grant and Artistic Development Grant. Mayor's request for legislation number 23-26 will be referred to the Law and Community Planning Committee. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-9 to amend the 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate funds into the police budget. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-9 is prepared for tonight's meeting as Ordinance 23-25. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-10 to amend the 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate funds into the Fire Claims Escrow Budget. Finance Director's request for legislation number F23-10 is prepared for tonight's meeting as Ordinance 23-27. And that concludes the written communications. Thank you. We are now on oral communications. <clears throat> Anyone wishing to address council may step to the podium, sign in, and direct their questions to myself, um, as we do have 
some, quite a few people in the room. I want to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to speak. Um, therefore, uh, each individual will, will be limited to three minutes uh, each. So anyone wishing to approach may do so. Five minutes each. Going <laughs> once, <laughs> going twice. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Joy Walters, and I am here to just, I guess, reiterate that I agree with Mr. Perry. Um, I think that since Mr. Perry explained the lack of knowledge with regard to the Board of Health members, I'd like to suggest reaching out to the Board President to get a feel for who is already represented and what they think about this appointment. Um, this is in regards to, the, of course, the candidates for the seat at the Health Board. Um, just my own thoughts, um, that the Board of Health is extremely important to the entire county and surrounding communities. A board and agency being the guardians with decision making over people's lives, their children and families, their livelihoods, their health and welfare should not abuse this privilege by assigning positions to those just purely from a political stance or political gain or power grab. The appointment is from the city of Tiffin, and it should be recognized as such that the citizens deserve to have their voices heard and deserve to have somebody in the seat that truly represents them. The seat holds a lot of power and it isn't just a garden club. People are tired of playing politics when their families, jobs, and health are on the line. And this board seat isn't for a political extremist. The person chosen must be inclusive and represent everybody and not just a minority. And those are my thoughts and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address council this evening? Hello, my name is Eve Bulkowski and I'm also here to oppose the appointment of John Bing. I've seen health and science be politicized for years. This man is a political extremist. His blog reads like a Marxist manifesto, just the light version. I want you to oppose his appointment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for um, coming to the meeting this evening. Oh, there, is. there was a hand that I saw. Maybe Dr. not. Baker. I thought Dr. Baker raised his hand. I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. Um, okay. We are now under motions. Are there any motions this evening? Councilman Jones. I'm not sure how I'm going to word it, but I'm going to make some kind of motion to, instead of the John Bing appointment being a one reading ordinance, which is normal, I want to extend that out to all three readings to get more input from the community if necessary. Thank you. It's my understanding we don't need a, a motion for that, but I'll defer to you, Law Director. Yeah, I've, I've given the opinion that this is not a one reading resolution, that it is a three reading resolution. Um, that only, the one reading resolution is in the charter, but that only applies to appointments that are specifically spelled out in the charter. This is not. This is by a contract between the city and the county, the Board of Health, from dating back to the 1970s. So as I said at a prior meeting, it's my opinion that council is required to have three readings um, of this unless they would suspend it by motion. But um, it's not a one reading like you had indicated, Councilman Jones. Okay. Someone mentioned that to me, and I just thought council decided whether it was one, two, or three readings but in this specific case. And I'll bring up the next issue when we come to it, so. Thank you. Any other motions this evening? Okay, we are now under resolutions and ordinances. Resolution number 23-15, introduced by Steve Leppard. Resolution accepting the recommendation of the Tax Incentive Review Council to continue certain tax incentive agreements with local businesses and property owners and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the third re reading of resolution 23-15. Councilman Leppard. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I would ask for passage of resolution number 23-15, 
along with the emergency. Thank you. There's a motion for passage um, of resolution 23-15, um, including the emergency. Is there a second? Council Member Perry. Yeah, second, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> none, we will first vote on the emergency. Council Member Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard. Yes. And Perry. Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of seven to zero. We will now vote on the passage. Council Member Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard. Yes. And Perry. Yes. Resolution 23-15 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Resolution number 23-16 introduced by Steve Leopard. Resolution approving and adopting the City of Tiffin's Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, transition plan. This is the second reading of resolution 23-16. Resolution number 23-17, introduced by Daniel Perry. Resolution approving mayor's appointment of John Bing to serve an unexpired term on the Seneca County Board of Health from the effective date of this resolution until December 31st, 2024 and declaring an emergency. This is the first reason, excuse me, first reading of resolution 23-17. Resolution number 23-18, introduced by Cheyenne Thacker, a resolution authorizing the mayor to apply for, accept and enter into a water pollution control loan fund, WPCLF agreement, on behalf of the city of Tiffin for planning of <coughs> wastewater facilities involving the EQ Basin project designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the first reading of resolution 23-18. Council Member uh, Thacker. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion for the suspension of council's three reading rule um, and approving resolution 23-18. Thank you. There is a motion for suspension of council's three reading rule and immediate passage of resolution 23-18. Is there a second? Councilmember Reesner. I'll second the motion. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we will first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard. Yes. And Perry. Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the passage. Council Member Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Resolution 23-18 passes with a vote of seven to zero. My apologies. I believe I slipped the resolution number 2319 in between the ordinances. So, and 30. That's right. And 20, I'm sorry, 19 and 20. Should I go back to those? These are on the water pollution. Okay. For 23-19. Yeah, right. No, I didn't. They might have gotten so in between when I, they might have gotten in between. Back to them. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. We can, I think we can yeah. just read mine. No, gosh, I just, they, they slipped in between the ordinances. Oh, okay. I was turning up. Just, okay. Okay. Go back to the resolutions then. Twenty-three uh, Resolution number 23-19, introduced by Cheyenne Thacker, a resolution authorizing the mayor to apply for, accept, and enter into a water pollution control loan fund, WPCLF, agreement on behalf of the city of Tiffin for the planning of wastewater facilities involving the main interceptor project, designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the first reading of resolution 23-19. Council Member Thacker. Um, yes, I'd like to ask for suspension of council's three reading rule and immediate passage of resolution 23-19. Thank you. There is a motion for suspension of council's three reading rule and immediate passage of resolution 23-19. Is there a second? Council Member Leopard. I'll second the motion, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> For the benefit of the people in the audience and people may be listening in or later on on YouTube, we just uh, declared an emergency, passed emergency on 2318. We're talking about it again in 2319. We talked committee the whole of doing the same thing for 2320. I just was hope so, a better speaker than I could explain why we're passing this 2319 as an emergency even after the first reading. 
Councilmember Thacker. Sure. So I'll try to explain to the best of my ability. Um, so as we discussed in our prior meeting for street sidewalk and sewer, um, we've been discussing this project for a long time to be able to stay on track with our Ohio mandated EPA long-term control plan. We have to be able to get these low interest rate loans to pay for the project. And while they will refund um, what, not refund, but I guess pay back to the city through the loan, whatever we pay out before we get that loan, it would be better for the city to not have to be repaid that amount if it goes out further. Do you, thank you. Does that help? Yeah, okay. thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, we will first vote on the suspension. Council Member Reesner. Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the emergency. Council Member Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the passage. Council Member Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Resolution 23-19 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Resolution number 23-20 introduced by Cheyenne Thacker, a resolution authorizing the mayor to apply for, accept, and enter into a water pollution control loan fund, WPCLF, agreement on behalf of the city of Tiffin for planning of wastewater facilities involving the Benner Interceptor Project, designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the first reading of resolution 23-20. Councilmember Thacker. Um, yes, I'd like to ask for suspension. Of, I'd like to move for a suspension of council's three reading rule in immediate passage of resolution 23-20. Thank you. There is a motion for suspension of council's three reading rule and immediate passage of resolution 23-20. Is there a second? Council Member Spar. Yes, I'll second that, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, we will first vote on the suspension. Council Member Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. <coughs> Leopard. Yes. And Perry. Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Resolution 23-20 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Now, ordinance number 23-16 introduced by Cheyenne Thacker. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept easements and licenses for sanitary sewer purposes for the home sewage treatment systems, HSTS, elimination project, and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the third reading of Ordinance 23-16. Council Member Thacker. Um, I move for passage of Ordinance 23-16. Thank you. There is a motion uh, for passage of Ordinance 23-16. Is there a second? Councilmember Wilkins. I'll second that motion. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll first vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reesner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard. Yes. And Perry. Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Reesner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Ordinance 23-16 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Ordinance number 23-17 introduced by Cheyenne Thacker. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept permanent easements from RNL Zeiss Family Partnership 3 Limited for sanitary and storm sewer purposes in the Fairview Hill condominium development on Euclid Avenue in the third ward of the city and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the third reading of Ordinance 23-17. Councilmember Thacker. I move for passage of Ordinance 23-17. Thank you. There is a motion for passage of Ordinance 23-17. Is there a second? Councilmember Spar. Yes, I second that motion. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll first vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reesner. Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. 
Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Peter? <coughs> yes. Ordinance 23-17 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Council member, I'm sorry, ordinance number 23-18, introduced by Council Member Thacker. Ordinance authorizing city administrator to prepare plans and specifications, advertise for and receive <coughs> bids, and recommend and execute a contract for the Home Sewage Treatment System, HSTS Elimination Project, amending the budget for the expense of the contract and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the third reading of Ordinance 23-18. Councilmember Thacker. I move for passage of Ordinance 23-18. Thank you. There is a motion for passage Ordinance 23-18. Is there a second? Councilmember Leopard. I'll second the motion, Madam President. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll first vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reisner. Yes. Spar. Yes. Thacker. Yes. Wilkins. Yes. Jones. Yes. Leopard. Yes. And Perry. Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of seven to zero. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yep. Ordinance 23-18 passes with a vote of seven to zero. Ordinance number 23-23, introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance authorizing all actions necessary to accept Northeast Ohio Public Energy Council NOPEC 2023 Energized Community Grant and declaring an emergency. Thank you. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-23. Councilmember Reisner. Madam President, I would like to move that City Council suspend the three reading rule and you have the immediate passage of Ordinance 23-23. Thank you. There is a motion to suspend Council's three reading rule and immediate passage of Ordinance 23-23. Is there a second? Councilmember Perry. Yeah, I'll second, Madam President. Thank you. There is a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I know this is a second reading and we're talking about possibly passing it tonight, but that's just so these grant dollars can get into the city coffers sooner than later. You got it. Thank well, you. there's a timeline. Timeline? Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. <coughs> yes. And Perry? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. <laughs> Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Ordinance 23-23 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Ordinance number 23-24 introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate $55,749 into the Street and Sewer Maintenance Department budgets from a grant received from NOPEC. Thank you. This is the second reading of Ordinance 23-24. Ordinance number 23-25 introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending 2023 Budget Ordinance 22-108 to appropriate a total of $4,664 into the Police Department budget with a donation received in the amount of $3,950 for the K-9 program and a reimbursement in the amount of $714 from the sale of scrap. This is the first reading of Ordinance 23-25. Councilmember Reisner. I'd like to ask that City Council um, suspend the three reading rule, Madam President, and immediately pass Ordinance 23-25. Thank you. There is a motion for passage, or excuse me, suspension of the Council three reading rule and passage of Ordinance 23-25. Is there a second? Council Member Spar. Yes, Madam President, I'll second that. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we'll first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Ordinance 23-25 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Ordinance number 23-26 introduced by Cheyenne Thacker. Ordinance consenting to the Ohio Department of Transportation, ODOT, 
to perform and complete a project to resurface a portion of SR18 in Seneca County, perform necessary related work, PID number 92371, county slash route slash section Seneca SR, or State Route 18, 2.45 slash 8.94, <coughs> resurfacing and declare an emergency. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. This is the first reading of Ordinance 23-26. Councilmember Thacker. Um, yes, I'd like to move for suspension of Council's three reading rule and immediate passage of Ordinance 23-26. Thank you. There is a motion to suspend Council's three reading rule and immediate passage of Ordinance 23-26. Is there a second? Councilmember Leopard. I'll second the motion, Madam President. Thank you. There is a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none, we will first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? <coughs> yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the emergency. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Emergency passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Ordinance 23-26 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. Ordinance number 23-27 introduced by Kevin Reisner. Ordinance amending <coughs> 2023 budget ordinance 22-108 to appropriate a total of $16,000 into the fire claims escrow budget in order to record a recent disbursement in the accounting system. Thank you. This is the first reading of Ordinance 23-27. Councilmember Reisner. Uh, Madam President, I move for the immediate passage of uh, Ordinance 23-27, suspending City Council's three reading rule. Thank you. There is a motion for suspension of Council's three reading rule and passage of Ordinance 23-27. Is there a second? Councilmember Perry. Yeah, I'll second, Madam President. Thank you. There is a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Jones. Thank you, Madam President. I should have did my homework ahead of time on Ordinance 23-27 but $16,000 into the fire claims escrow fund. I thought if there was a fire and the structure was insured, that 10% of that insurance money went into this escrow account. What's different between this 16,000 and the 10% that the residents put into the same fund? Finance Director. The 16,000 is the amount that we need to be able to make the accounting in the system to show the disbursement. Uh, the fire claims escrow fund is something that we keep as the city. Um, we get the check from the insurance company and we hold that until the building is either made safe by raising it or renovating it. Then once it passes the inspection from the fire chief, then I'm allowed to make that disbursement to the owner. And so being it that we just need to put enough in the budget to show that accounting as a money in, money back out. So the money is already there. I'm hearing you say. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Okay, um, we will first vote on the suspension. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Barr? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry? Yes. Suspension passes with a vote of 7 to 0. We'll now vote on the passage. Councilmember Reisner? Yes. Spar? Yes. Thacker? Yes. Wilkins? Yes. Jones? Yes. Leopard? Yes. And Perry. Yes. Ordinance 23-27 passes with a vote of 7 to 0. And that concludes the legislation, Madam President. Thank you. We are now under other business. Is there any other business to come before council this evening? I feel like she won. Councilmember Thacker. Um, I'd like to announce a streets, sidewalks, and sewers meeting on May 1st at 6 p.m. The purpose is to discuss uh, further golf carts and utility vehicles and any other business presented. Okay. Are you doing the, the um, uh, sorry, the second, yeah, 23-25 at a different meeting? Um, I guess we could do that at that meeting as well. You don't have to. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, Lord Rector. Also, just to add to the announcement of the, the committee meeting, I'll make every effort in this next week to get a draft of the um, golf cart, utility vehicle, 
uh, legislation based on what I heard the consensus was at the committee meeting, so everybody has a chance to look at it. It's not going to be a finished document by any means. It's just going to put in language that you can see what you are considering. So I'll expect some input at that committee meeting, and then eventually there will be legislation before council. Thank you. So look for my email to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Leppard. Uh, Dan and uh, Vicki, are you available for a lawn community planning meeting on May 1st at 530? Prior to the street sidewalk and sewer committee meeting. It'll be close, but <clears throat> if Dan can swing it, I'll try to swing it. I could probably make that work, too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to call a Lawn Community Planning Committee meeting uh, for May 1st to 5.30 p.m. Uh, purpose of the meeting is Mayor's request for legislation 23-26, TMAC Community Placemaking Grant and Artistic Development Grant. And any other business that uh, may come before us. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Perry. Unless somebody from the Labor and Personnel uh, carries the call meeting about uh, Dr. Susan Carty to the Shade Tree and Beautification Com Commission, I will not be requesting a hearing. No objections? Good deal. Any other business uh, to come before council this evening? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you.